Even for those of you who don't follow Star Citizen that closely, the authoring tools shown at CitizenCon 2016 are pretty cool, at least from a technology standpoint. This is all plugged into CryEngine, or what's now called Star Engine, and it's done with what Sean Tracy was describing as Planet Ed, or Planet Editor. So we can see some of the procedural generation tool set in action from the CitizenCon demo, which is what you're watching here. If you missed the stream, this is a good place to at least keep up with what's going on behind the scenes and learn a bit about game development from a lower level in terms of the engine technology and things like that. So in this demo, what is shown primarily is Planet Ed. We can see using basically paintbrushes almost in Photoshop style to paint biomes and things like that on the surface. There's large object placement as well. We see that towards sort of the middle end of the demo. And then it's also used to showcase the flexibility of the engine built now called Star Engine on top of CryEngine, where uh, sort of a more acrid swamp-like planet is used as the demonstration for more exotic biomes and territories and things like that, as opposed to the traditional desert planet and ice planet and the Earth-like homestead demo. So I will let you watch through this if you I haven't followed Star Citizen at all. I think it's pretty interesting just again from a development standpoint, but we won't be commenting through the whole thing because it's pretty long. So it's just here as a reference material if it's needed in the future. We're hosting it on our own just for that reason. So without further ado, I'll let you get to the content. Hit links in the description below for follow-up coverage of CitizenCon 2016. I'll see you all next time. All right, so the next thing um, is that there's no restriction to view distance. You saw this in the whole pull through in the uh, initial demo, but you'll see this here as Simon zooms around within the editor. And again, this is all happening real time. We thought it best to show how we actually build this stuff for you guys so that you guys can have a little bit of faith that we're going to be able to fill um, all this content up for you. So one of the things we like to do is just kind of show the scale because the scale is really hard to wrap your mind around. Um, as, even, as a, even as a designer, it, it can be uh, um, very jarring when you go from just a centimeter level of precision all the way out to thousands and thousands of kilometers. So he plopped a character in there just to give you an idea of what you're actually looking at because it can be easy to get um, um, sort of a uh, god complex when you're looking at this kind of stuff. All right, so I think we're going to go find a little area here and uh, do a little bit of work because one of the biggest uh, and most powerful pieces of the tools, and it's probably what we work on the hardest, is that it, it's, it's artist guided, but it's procedurally generated. So the artist can still have this really fine-tuned control over the areas that they want, but we can do it on such a massive scale, and they can even go in afterwards and sort of tweak up the objects. So you'll see he's actually just creating more landscape. Um, we actually use an ecosystem system ecosystem technology to do this. So I'm gonna let Simon paint a little bit of terrain here. And this is pretty awesome. This is what we get to do every day. So um, it's really exciting to be able to work on this kind of technology. And it's even better to be able to stand in front uh, of you guys in front of this kind of technology because there's 360 other you know developers that are working on this stuff. So um, I've gotta say that it's a massive, massive team effort. All right, so what he's actually doing is painting down different ecosystems. Uh, the ecosystem is kind of like a high-level visual representation of a classic level, uh, of a classic game level, really. Um, so the ecosystem defines things like uh, the general terrain shape. Um, so whether it's down desert, whether it's mountains, whether it's ocean. Um, it also defines some of the main feature terrains, uh, things like uh, erosion or valleys and trees. And you can see as he paints around, it changes all the ecosystem underneath. All right, shall we find a nice little spot to build up on? So while Simon looks for a little spot here, just to let you know, the uh, planets are made out of uh, uh, all these ecosystem tiles or chunks, uh, and it's made out of thousands of these chunks, and we can modify them again on a really, really macro scale, so uh, on a planetary scale, uh, or on a very, very micro sort of scale. So the first thing he likes to drop down is always a, a little bit of a, a lake or a river. So of course we've got the water support that uh, we wanted to, but we had to actually rewrite the whole ocean and, and water volume system in the CryEngine to be able to support, again, the spherical level uh, uh, terrain. 
And as you can see, the results are actually really, really good. There's no pressure on Simon at all. So what he's placing in now is one of these object containers. So again, we thought it'd be cool if we really just kind of pulled the pulled the curtains and, and showed you how we how we make this stuff. So an object container is uh, how we actually classify a whole bunch of different objects. So it might be lights, it might be geometry, uh, might even be script. Um, there's many different things that an object container can contain. Uh, and the whole point of object containers is really so that we have this powerful streaming system so that we can bring in an entire level worth of content and then bring it out and even better, we can fly around levels of content, which is what the capital ships are really doing. So this is the tower we just saw in Homestead. We're going to set up a little uh, location here. We'll put a couple uh, objects down uh, and, and we'll do a little bit of exploring. So you see how quickly the designer actually controls uh, the procedural distribution of the trees, grass, groups of objects. And this isn't restricted to vegetation, right? You can do this with rocks, you can do this with uh, grass, you can do this with buildings, maybe, question mark? Uh, we'll get to that at some point, I'm sure. So one of the things I did promise my German counterparts is that we'd keep the tools off the screen uh, because they really want to reveal this stuff. They've done a ton of work on these tools. So a lot of uh, what you see, we get to showcase you know, the final results of this stuff, but there is so much work that actually goes into being able to bring you that. Um, and a lot of those guys don't get enough credit. Um, so really excited to be able to stand in front of this stuff uh, for them. So he's dressing up the scene a little bit. He's trying to make it a little bit nicer looking. Uh, we've got a special little prop here that uh, Simon seems to like to drop in. You might recognize it. <laughs> so we're creating a little home for this crab. I think he lives under the tower. Yeah, maybe he's got family. Bigger. Make a bigger one. There we go. <laughs> it's a daddy crab, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> now we're talking, son. Now we're talking. So that gives you a really good idea of, you know, this took what, maybe, you know, five, six minutes, um, and we were able to build up just a little section. Now, you know, this isn't about to ship out to you guys looking exactly like this, but uh, again, it shows. Oh, I thought. He was mad. We, we would ship it, Simon. Just, we would ship it. We would all yeah, we ship it. I ship it. Um, so again, uh, we need to be able to create this content super quickly, but still have that artist input, because if you don't have that artist input, uh, eventually you end up with very generic looks, uh, and we can't give you these moments that we really are, uh, um, are excited to, to, to share with you. So what do you think? Should we show that, uh, All right, so the last little bit of this, uh, this is kind of a fun bit, is uh, in a lot of game levels, the thing is, is that you're in a skybox. Like, it, what you're not, what is so hard to wrap your head around is that that's not a skybox, that's actual atmosphere scattering that's happening. The sky is blue because the light scatters, right? Um, so let's just kind of prove that to you. Um, those little sprites in the sky, they're not really sprites. Those are other planets. So let's see if we can explore one of those. One of the other cool things, anyways, just about our editor in general, you saw that while he's developing, he can actually just jump in and start actually playing the game directly from it. Um, it's a super powerful tool. Uh, you won't iterate too much on stuff if you have to shut down, take five minutes to reload some other, uh, uh, some other uh, executable, then you come back to your editor. Being able to just minutely change thing after thing after thing and jump in and try it again and jump in and try it again and jump in and try it again um, gives you really polished content. 
So there's one reason I'm standing here talking about it and Simon's flying. He's actually, he's a very, very good pilot and I think we're about to showcase this, no pressure. <laughs> so that's not a Sprite. Let's go. showing off a little more of the exotic ecosystem that we can do and we barely just scratched the surface on how far we could really take the uh, the exotic bits. These are sulfur lakes. This place probably just stinks. I mean it's super hot. The sunset though that you can see again with the atmosphere scattering we get this for free. Um, you know, not for free. I mean somebody worked very very hard on it. Um, but in terms of actually running in the game, when the sun comes down on the horizon, yeah, we're going to get that scattering. We get natural day-night cycles because, well, the planet's rotating. So you see, they're doing a bit of mining here, but uh, Simon's, he's brave. All right. Hope he has <laughs> blacked out. We're all done. There's no pressure. <laughs> but we really wanted to show you again, like, uh, without having too big of a demo put around it, we wanted to show you how we kind of, uh, you know, level design jazz, Simon called it earlier, just something a little bit improv. Like, oh, what's this? Yeah, somebody find the information with us. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Whoa! <laughs> So we're going to go chase him down, see where he went. Hey, hi, bro. It's an interesting ship. 